Hey guys, thank you for coming back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to give sub-Q fluids, which is fluids under the skin. A doctor may recommend it for a cat or dog, um, for an owner to do it at home. So this video is going to show you how to do it. Alright, so hopefully the technician um, or pharmacy, whoever gives you the fluid bag to take home, hopefully they have it set up already, but sometimes they don't. So if they don't, there's three parts to it. So this is the fluids. You should usually get a thousand liters. Sometimes it's a smaller bag, um, but this is ideally the fluid bag that you'll be going home with. Um, and then this is the IV line. Um, and then this is the needle right here. Um, and depending on the brand, um, it may look a little bit different, um, but it is pretty much all the same. So let me open it. All right, so now that I have the fluid bag out, this little white part here is what you want to take off. I'm going to rip that off, and you're going to see a little hole there, and you're going to rip this off, and then this part right here, you're going to take this cap off, and you're going to place this inside here. You're going to screw it on and then you're gonna turn it this way and then you want to pinch here so it ha so it fills up halfway here and then you want to squeeze until all the fluids go through the entire line you're gonna wait till it starts stripping like that and then you could clamp it right here so I'm gonna push that so that way it is clamped you could see that so um, this means that the fluids are running on because it's not clamped. Try and get you guys to see that. And then if you push it this way, now the fluids can't run because it's clamped. So the next thing I want to talk about is the needle. Now this is an 18 gauge. Um, I had have owners request for a smaller gauge because they're scared that the gauge is too big. Um, this is a big gauge needle, um, but we do usually do the 18 gauge just so that way the fluids are running quicker. Um, if you do a smaller gauge needle, then the fluids don't go in the patient as quickly. And if you're doing a cat, um, they like to move a lot, so you want to do it as quickly as possible. Um, so that's why we always use an 18 gauge, um, so that why, way the patient is not staying there for a long period of time. Um, so this is the needle. Now judging on the brand, um, the 18 gauge may be a different color like pink um, or this color. Um, so it all depends on the brand, but if you look on it, it should say 18 gauge um, needle. And at the end of the line here, you want to take this off. And you always want something at the end of this line to keep it sterile because you don't want to get this unsterile. So you're going to place the needle like that and you're going to screw this on. All right, so now when you're giving this to your, um, to your dog or cat, you want to make sure that the bevel is up, meaning that there's a little um, indent right there, if you guys can see. And that that is what you want to be facing towards you, facing up. And this is the other side of it. And that is what you want to be facing down when you're giving it to the patient. And when you're giving it, you want to go sideways. You don't want to go down. Um, you don't want to go up, obviously. You just want to go straight in. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull your dog or cat's skin right by their shoulder blades. You're going to lift their skin up, and it's going to make like a tent um, or a triangle. And you want to place it right inside that triangle. So you're going to pull the skin up. You're going to make sure the bevel is up, and you're going to place it just like that. Sometimes the patient's skin... Um, 
like older patients, older cats, they usually have thin skin. Um, so sometimes you may poke through, which is okay. All you gotta do, instead of re-poking, all you have to do is just push the needle back a little bit and then that should be fine. Um, so, and then while, once you're in the patient, what you're gonna do is you're gonna unclamp this so that way the fluids can run through the line and you're gonna squeeze. And there is no time limit. Um, you don't have to do it slow. Um, we prefer to squeeze it as hard as you can so that way the fluids can go quicker so the whole process can be quicker. Um, so if you have to give 100 mLs or uh, 200 mLs, this is a way to read the bag. So on here, so the one to the two, that's 100 mLs right there. Um, so each line is 50. So that's 50, 100, 150, 200. Um, so that is how you're going to read how much you're giving. And I recommend always looking at the bag where the, where the line is. And that is what is telling you how much is in the bag. So you always want to look where that line is, where the um, fluids end before you're giving it so you know how much fluids you're giving. Um, and I always usually do roll up the bag so that way you can see it much better. So right now it looks like we're just a tad bit above the one. Alright so this is my cat right here. Uh, I'm going to try and show you so you want to pull the skin up right here, okay? And then, so once you pull it, you're going to place the needle right in that pocket right there. And that's where you want to poke them. Okay, so once you poke your dog or cat, you do want to see the skin starting to fill up with the fluids and it will make a bubble like shape um, and that is what you want to look for. Um, if it starts leaking outside the skin that usually means you went through the skin um, which that usually happens to older patients so all you do is push the needle ever so slightly back and then keep squeezing and it, that should resolve that issue. Um, don't freak out it's okay it happens sometimes um, but I always pull back um, instead of pulling it back completely and then resticking because then your dog or cat will have to be stuck with the needle again which is not always pleasant. Um, another thing I do want to say is always always change your needles every single time that you do this because every single time you poke that makes the needle duller. Um, so once the needle is duller that means that it's going to hurt your patient or your cat or dog um, much more. So that's why you always want to make sure it's a fresh needle so that way it's nice and sharp so that way the, it doesn't hurt as much. When you're done giving your cat or dog the proper amount of fluids um, under the skin, when you're pulling the needle out, you do want to apply pressure with your hand. Now this prevents fluids from coming out of the hole that you poke them with. Now it usually still happens a little bit. That is okay. That is normal. Um, if you do see some fluids coming out, it will eventually stop. Um, and that does mean they're still getting the proper amount of fluids. So don't freak out that they're not getting enough. Um, they're still getting enough. And um, sometimes you may notice a little blood as well, which is normal. Um, don't freak out if you notice any blood. Um, you could wipe it with peroxide um, and a paper towel. Um, and that usually gets the blood off right away um, if that does decide to happen. My favorite trick of all after giving fluids is once you see the lump in between the shoulder blades, all you gotta do is massage ever so slightly. Just keep massaging, that way the fluids um, resolve quicker so that way it's less uncomfortable for the patient and I also think it definitely makes them feel less uncomfortable. Um, and another thing, sometimes you're giving your cat um, so many fluids, um, you know, a lot of clients sometimes do it like three times a week, sometimes they do it every day. Now if you're doing it every day, sometimes the doctor recommends giving it in different places. Um, so you don't always have to do it in between the shoulder blades if you are giving it a lot um, because that way that area 
tends to become more sensitive um, because you're poking it all the time. Um, in that case, you can um, go along the back um, a little further down um, in those kind of cases. Another thing is um, when you do give the sub fluids in between the shoulder blades or anywhere else, um, sometimes gravity tends to drop the fluids down. So you may notice a little lump under their um, armpit area sometimes, and that is normal just because gravity is doing what gravity does. Um, so that is normal. Um, if you do notice a little lump in the armpit area, the same thing, you could just give massage um, and that should help it um, absorb quicker. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you got the information you guys were looking for. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Um, and if you guys still don't feel comfortable giving the fluids after watching this video, um, you could always call your local um, veterinarian clinic that you guys use, um, and they should have... Um, they could do something where the technicians um, can do it for you, where you would drop your patient off there um, so the technicians can do it for you so that way you don't have to do it at home. Um, there's There should be that option as well. I know our animal hospital that I work at um, does that for you. Um, but that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you are subscribed. If not, um, feel free to. And I shall make another video shortly. Thank you.